everybody, this is Dr. Michael Shear with Fast Track Dental CE. I wanted to report to you this little informational video just because I had a kind of a rare occurrence here with my 3D printer. I had a printing failure. I wanted to kind of show you how I work through it, how I manage it, and how we improve on that so that way we don't have a failure again in the future. So as I went ahead, I came into my office this morning and I 3D printed something overnight. I came in here and thought, well shoot, my model looks fantastic. And then I turn it around and you can see here it just kind of sheared right off. The full model obviously was a full hybrid, you know, as an opposing model for doing some laboratory work and I 3D printed it. So uh, even put it all the normal positions, made sure it was in line with the wiper, made sure it was well supported. I even used these supports as you can see here and I still had a print failure. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the software, figure out how I can improve upon it. But first of all, let's manage the printer, get it all cleaned up so that it can get ready for its next print. So I'll put that to the side for now. Come on in. And what I first do on any sort of failure is I take my wiper blade and just kind of move it side to side, make sure I don't see any major pieces of resin sticking anywhere. Take my little spatula instrument, just kind of move it side to side. Then right in here, move it side to side, make sure I don't have any big pieces. As you can see here, a lot of people online really kind of uh, are getting kind of crazy about the Formlabs printer because they think, well, if you get a little you know, printer failure like that, something happens, it's going to spill resin everywhere. If you're printing carefully, uh, you won't have that problem. What happens is that if you're pushing the envelope, doing a lot of supportless printing and things like that, then yes, you could potentially get that little error that occurs. But what I'm going to do is, is with the, with the um, using the support modes for this model, because I knew it was going to be a tricky model to print, if I do have a little bit of a failure, all it does is give a little cured resin right at the bottom of the tank here. I'll show you right here. So as I move this side to side, I can feel my wiper kind of bounce a little bit. And right in here, that's where the printing failure occurred. There's a little tiny piece of just resin. I just take my spatula and I come up underneath it like that. Grab just a little multi-fold towel, wipe it off. And then what I do is just make sure as I peel down, peel side to side, I see clear uh, PMDS layer underneath there, the silicone layer. Then I take my wiper blade, move it from side to side. You can really tell a lot about a printer just by the noise of it. And if you hear like a thump, 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 then there is something wrong with the print. It should just hear just a clean mechanical noise. So I'm going to take that off, get rid of this here. And that's very simple as well. I'll take this to my uh, back laboratory where my washing station is. I'm just going to literally just remove it like that, pop the bottom part off, wipe it really well just for the way it's ready for its next print. But we'll do that in just a moment because I want to show you on the software what happened here. You can see this is what my print file here looked like. Now you can tell that this was kind of a tricky model for me to print just because it's a lot of overhanging areas, some different areas, especially right in here. If I showed you on the model, this is the part that failed right in here. So right in here is, is the overhanging area right here on this print. Even though on this side is something very similar, sometimes it's hard to describe why little failures occur along the lines. But what I would do for this model is, is you know, my positioning is good. I had it in line with the wiper side. So I did everything right here. I'm going to go slide up through my slices and just kind of take a look and see the area where it failed is right in here. Most likely the reason why it failed is because there was an excessive amount of pressure just peeling in that lateral direction right about here is where it failed. So there's a lot of unsupported area right in here. So all I'm going to do is just go ahead and come back under my support edits. I'm going to add a few extra little supports in here just so that way I minimize the chance of failure again to occur. And that looks pretty good like that. And just for good measure, I'll do it here on the other side. Many of these overhanging areas are really, really tricky for me to work with, and I really do not like printing failures. So on an opposing model like this, it's no big deal that I have a few extra supports. And now I can go back through, just kind of triple check, make sure that I don't have any unsupported areas. Looking good. All right, now we're ready to print. Hey everybody, it's a little bit later on now and I went ahead and wanted to check our 3D printer and see how we did. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to open up my 3D printer lid, pull out my print, 
And it looks like I've successfully printed that same print that came out a little bit goofy that first time around. As you can tell here, just a slight reorientation of my supports was able to get that print to come out just fine. And just to kind of show you here what it looks like, I'll just do a quick little wipe off just to kind of take a look here at it. You can see the print came out really clean, really crisp. This is what I expect with my Formlabs 3D printer before I go through my um, alcohol, isopropanol, wash, etc. But you can see here, everything turned out really, really good. Across the board, these are just simple little things that I've noticed in my practice. The vast majority of time, I mean, I think my printing success is right around 98% for the two years that I've own the printer, very few problems, but that was kind of a classic one that I occasionally see, especially with these patients that have like a lot of overhanging teeth or a patient's got a lot of, you know, uh, angulation to their teeth. You can't print it, you know, perfectly flat on the print base just because there's gonna be a lot of unsupported tooth in there. And then especially with patients that are wearing hybrids that I use my my scanner to, to scan their hybrid um, uh, prosthesis so I can do something to the opposing arch, et cetera, part of my prosthesis or occlusal guards or things of that nature. So also taking a look here at my 3D printer, you can see here I've got a really good, nice and clean resin tank using my little spatula. I don't see any sort of remnants of my 3D print. Uh, my silicone layer here is nice and clean and crisp. I have no excess print resin coming around the sides. Pretty ideal here for my Formlabs 3D printer. Uh, so hopefully this has been kind of a nice educational little video here at Fast Track Dental CE. Make sure you check us out here on Facebook as well as FastTrackDentalCE.com. See you next time.